Hey guys, so in this lecture we'll talk about the ideas of consumer surplus, producer surplus and dead weight loss and how this can be used to assess using cost benefit analysis of what to produce in a market. And this is very important um, concept to know when measuring the economic benefit or the economic loss um, pertaining to certain markets. So let's before we start off with the actual analysis, um, we're going to define each of these terms. So consumer surplus is the economic benefit derived by consumers as a result of consumption. We use a similar definition for producer surplus, which is the economic benefit derived by producers as a result of production or better terms sales and lastly we have dead weight loss which is a measure of economic or allocative inefficiency now these three concepts are a lot easier to understand if we use a graph Okay, so now we're going to use a graph. We're going to use the normal supply and demand graph that we've been so familiar with over the course of economics. So you have price and you have the quantity. Now, as we know, we have an upward sloping supply curve and a downward sloping demand curve. And so at this price, we have an equilibrium at point P1 and Q1. So as we know, we have demand, and this is a measure of consumer satisfaction. So we know we will only buy a product if the benefit of that product is greater than its cost. So how would you, how would you measure this? So um, take, for example, eating, say, a pizza. It might be very hard to determine the, the material gain from consuming pizza. But if you look at it this way, if, if the pizza cost $20, right, would you buy this pizza? It's very simple. You can use opportunity cost as a measure of whether or not to buy this pizza. So what you do, you, so you know the cost of a pizza is $20, but how would you measure the benefit? Okay, so take for example, you're very hungry at this stage. It's dinner, you have this pizza for dinner, and you have someone who approaches you and says, Okay, I want to pay you $15 for you not to eat this pizza. And of course, if you say no, I want to eat it, or if you say yes, I will take this $15 and forego the pizza and not pay the $20, then you know the benefit of the pizza is around $15, and this is less than the cost of $20. And so you shouldn't buy this pizza. But on the other hand, if someone offered you $15 and you said, no, I still want to eat that pizza because I'm very hungry at this stage, then the benefit of a pizza is greater than $15. And so this process goes on. So someone offers you $16, you say no, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Let's say, let's say this person offers you $25 and that's your threshold. So at $25, you're going to be like, okay, I'm not going to eat dinner because I think the pizza is not worth it. I think $25 is worth more than the, the, the cost of the pizza or the pleasure I derive from the pizza. And so because $25 is your benefit, which is greater than the cost of $20, you know that the consumer satisfaction of eating a pizza is equivalent to the $25 that you get by foregoing the pizza. And so that's how cost-benefit analysis works. So you only consume a good if, um, if the benefit outweighs the cost of consumption. Okay, so what this means is that if we analyze the demand curve, you can see that at price P, let's say for pizza, which is here, which is say $25, you're going to buy this pizza because at the equilibrium price, let's say the equilibrium price of a pizza is $20. So you're, gonna, you're definitely going to buy this pizza at $25 because you're going to gain a 25 minus a $20, which is a $5 worth of benefit or consumer satisfaction from 
getting the piece. And we can we can use this analysis for every part of the demand curve above the equilibrium price. So every point here, let's just highlight this purple. This area here represents the consumer surplus. And so this is where we have an excess of benefit to the cost. Now we can use the same analysis for producer surplus. Let's rub this out. And using the same um, pizza analogy, we have a pizza which costs $20 at equilibrium. That's the price of a pizza, and that's the revenue that the producers are going to get from selling pizza. Let's say the cost of making a pizza is $15. And so there is incentive for um, producers to produce this pizza because they make a $5 profit from making it. So let's say 15 we have $15 here, and the equilibrium price is at $20, so they make a $5 worth of benefit. And this analysis can go on for the entire area below the, um, the equilibrium price. And so we have this area here, which represents the producer surplus. So take the example where we have some a point at, say, here. Producers won't be able to produce here because there is not enough demand at point at, at $25 to produce. But some people will still buy it at point at this point at equilibrium at $20 because we can see that some people may derive a pleasure of say around let's say the top bit here is $30. So the most pleasure someone can derive from eating this pizza is $30. So they would gain a 30 minus 20, a $10 worth of benefit from eating the pizza. And the lowest cost that producers can produce is at $5. So producers won't supply pizzas here because they, won't, they are not maximizing their living standards because supply exceeds demand and they won't produce it here because demand exceeds supply. So they're going to increase the price until they reach this equilibrium point. And this is basic demand and supply analysis. So now we can see that consumer surplus and producer surplus reflects the excess in economic benefits derived by consumers and producers respectively by consumption, by either consumption or production of a certain good or service. So the consumer surplus is measured by any point above the equilibrium line and also that um, is encompassed or in, sort of enclosed by the demand curve. So here this bit here, this is consumer surplus, and here this bit, which is here, represents the producer surplus. Now let's look at the concept of deadweight losses. And this is a measure of inefficiency in the marketplace. So we have a quantity and a price. They're using the same supply and demand curve for pizza. Now let's assume that the producers charge a price at $25. Now we can see that the supply of pizzas would in fact be somewhere here. But let's look at the consumer surplus. Only here, this line, or exceeding this point here, that consumers will derive benefit. So only these type of consumers who value the pizza at more than $25 will derive benefit. And since producers um, can produce at $25, those producing at less than $25 will derive producer surplus here. So in fact producer surplus increases from this area here to this big area here. However, what is lost is this area here, which I'll highlight as red. So this represents the dead weight loss. And so consumers could have indeed, so this area here is the dead weight loss. Consumers could have, in fact, derived that much more surplus, and producers could have indeed derived that much more surplus by selling a price at the equilibrium price of $25, $20, $20 in fact. 
and instead they're only trading at Q1 here where they could have traded at Q2. And so that represents the, the, the um, dead weight loss, which is the measure of economic or allocative inefficiency. So living standards here is not maximized because those consumers from this point here to this point here are not exactly deriving any benefit from the pizza, where they could have if the price was at $20. So the producers could have made more profit and the consumers could have made um, consumed more. And so although in this case possibly if this area here let's make this clearer if this area let's actually make this graph a little bit more clearer for this example's sake. So we have gain price quantity supply and demand. What we were talking about was if the price was at equilibrium, we have a very efficient allocation of resources. But if the price was at P1, we can see that if and only if this area here is greater than this area here, then we can see that producer surplus, in fact, has increased, but consumer surplus has decreased. And as we know here, by just observing this graph, this area is here is obviously less than this whole triangle here. And so we can see that the total surplus in society has decreased. And this amount that has decreased by shown by this triangle here is the dead weight loss. Now these three concepts are very important if we move on to how relative subsidies, quotas, um, taxes can affect um, the total surplus or the economic efficiency in, in certain markets. And this, these concepts we'll come back to in further lectures on how market failure fails to allocate resources efficient, efficiently and so that dead weight losses arise.